Hi. Every sleuth investor has a weakness. Mine is turnarounds. I can't resist them. What is a turnaround? It's a company in trouble whose stock is being given away even as the company is being fixed. Maybe. What's the attraction? Well, if your sleuthing is correct and the company does turn around, you can make multiples of your money. Multiples. So what's the problem? There are at least three. First problem, the turnaround may not happen. Then what you see as a hidden value becomes a value trap. I've had one or two of these. Second problem, just when the company begins to turn around, someone pounces and takes it over, scooping all of future juice, leaving a sour taste in your mouth. I had one or two of these too. But the third problem, the most common, is that the turnaround takes longer to happen than you think. And before it finally does, you lose patience and sell. Maybe even at some profit, but right after you sell, the stock soars, and then you really can't sleep. How to find a turnaround? Usually it's hard. So to make it easy on myself, what I look for is a company in a cyclical business where the product changes regularly every few years. Because when a product does change, what often takes place is the crossover. What's that? That's when product A is dying, but product B, in which the company has been investing, only begins to rise. Then for a year or two, Product B's rising revenues are not enough to make up for the decline in revenues of product A. <clears throat> so for a while, the company's costs are double, both for A and for B, while reported revenues decline. It's when the crossover occurs that things look bleakest. Earnings fall or even turn into a loss as costs associated with product A are cut and the old product line is written off, which usually causes a big loss and a drop in product in, in the book value. Analysts then recommend a sale and the top tanks. Everything looks bad. However, with a cleaner operation, lower cost, and a new product line, revenue begins to inch up and maybe even show a profit. By then, insider already have begun to buy. You should buy too, right? Maybe. Why maybe? Two reasons. First, Turnarounds can stumble and slide for quite a while before finally rising, if they rise. An insider, just like investors, yes, even sleuths, can be too optimistic and buy too, too early. In fact, many do. Second, insiders can even be wrong. I've seen that too. That's why even if you are a good sleuth, and I'm not bad, during that long turnaround fix, your sleep suffers, your pride hurt, your self-confidence sags, even as you tell yourself to stick with it. That's perhaps the only time in investing that FOMO, the fear of missing out is justified, is then. Because if you stick around here, you can make multiples of your money, five times, 10 times, even more, multiples. The problem though, is that human patience has its limit. So in some cases you sell too soon, which is why I both love turnarounds and hate them. Yet, I often can't resist them. So let me tell you about one I missed, partly. The stock is Novavax. Simple is NVAX. The company is in the business of producing flu vaccines. Yes, it has been public for a quarter of a century. Up to five years ago, the stock was regular as a Swiss watch. Every three or four years, a new strain of flu appeared, regular flu. The company came up with a new vaccine. Revenues rose, the stock tripled, then in a year or two fell back to the bottom. Then again, rise and fall, rinse and repeat. However, a few years ago, when the stock was about five, adjusted for split, it popped up on one of my value screens. Why did it? Because it showed a bargain value due to its R&D. A sidebar there. I once read a value tech fund, a uh, hedge fund, buying well sleuth tech stocks when they became bargains. One of the criteria of value in a tech company is that you can buy it entirely, that is the enterprise value, market cap plus debt minus cash, at less than the sum of the last three years R&D per share. Why that number? Because the world doesn't stand still, R&D value is halved every three or four years. 
So the sum of the R&D of the last three years is a good indicator of the value of technology in the company, the so-called IP or intellectual property. And why is this number important? Because if this R&D produces a product that catches fire, any competitor will have to spend at least as much plus marketing plus admin to compete when this company already has a leg up on the business. So if you can buy the R&D at less than what the company has spent on it, on its new product, it may be a bargain, maybe. The trick is to find a company that does mostly D, that is development rather than R or basic blue sky research. It's like an oil company doing side drilling into an existing well, which is far less risky rather than wildcat drilling, which is rolling the dice into a new oil field that may not be there. In other words, you want to buy the spendings that have a high chance of producing revenues and buy them at a discount. Anyway, Novavax was selling then at about 60 or 65% of R&D per share. Yes, it was bleeding cash, but it had just gotten a two-year pocket money from someone and an experienced CEO just joined in, a very experienced CEO. Who was that super savvy someone that gave it pocket money? None other than Bill Gates. Remember, this was five years ago. So Bill Gates must have been a prophet to see how flu vaccine would be in such demand five years later. And not only was he a prophet, he was loyal too, because as the company did more money to develop vaccines over the years, he gave it much more money via an international biotech operation which he had helped start, stationed offshore, in which he had about half. So I bought some, and Vax stock too. The problem was, I wasn't as prophetic as Bill Gates. So when the stock doubled, I sold half of it. Then as it tripled, I sold the rest. Where is the stock now? From five or six then, it is now close to $130, $130, or 25 times. Nice gain if you can get it. If you are a prophet, that is, and are patient, which seeing the future prophetically can help you become. Yes, I had done okay, but I could have done much better if only I had, I had Gates, Bill Gates' sense of prophetic foresight. Is there still an upside in Novavax? There may be, but the stock is now almost as high as it ever was in its past cycles, adjusted for splits. So as they say in stock market circles, at this point, the risk reward ratio is less interesting. Or maybe not, I can't say. You'd have to be a prophet to know this. By the way, Novavax is not the only pharma stock that Bill Gates invested in. Roughly the same time as his prophetic call on Novavax, Gates also invested prophetically in a company uh, developing AI tools with fine drugs. And yet, and yes, it too is now looking for a vaccine, probably. The com- that second company is named Schrodinger, symbol SDGR, named after the famous cat torturing physicist. Gates' co-investor in Schrodinger is David Shaw, a Wall Street maven who also has a few billions in the banks, though not as many as Bill, who has more than 90 of them. Schrodinger just went public in February, just when the virus was being beginning to make news. Impeccable timing. Since it went public, Schrodinger's stock tripled in six months. Must be nice to be a prophet. Is there more upside in it? How should I know? As I said, unlike some others, I'm not a prophet, just a lowly stock sleuth. If you want to see more examples of sleuthing for turnarounds or other stocks, buy my book, The Sleuth Investor, and see for yourself. That's all for today. Please let me know in the comment below what you think of the above. Subscribe to the channel and tell your friends about it so they can subscribe too. I'll see you next time. And meantime, thank you very much for watching.